All right, today we're going to look at how do we mechanically trim an airplane after we've flown it. We got it all nicely dialed in. Um, the, we're going to use an E-Flight Cherokee for our example here. This one's got a couple flights on it in which we really uh, focused on dialing the airplane in. So that's uh, flying it in very calm conditions, getting it up to altitude, taking our hands off the sticks, and kind of seeing what does the airplane uh, do in the air, and then moving our uh, trim lever or trim knobs on our controller until the airplane will fly uh, perfectly level um, and not have any movement at 50% throttle um, in, in calm conditions. And then once that is done, in order for really for AS3X, the stabilization system to work properly, um, you have to land and then mechanically trim all the services back to neutral. So right now there's a, there's a number of um, trim adjustments inside the controller that are manipulating the services away from their neutral point in order to get the airplane to fly properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust each one of these surfaces so that we can move the trim right back to center again, and then AS3X will then realize that that's the neutral point, and then the trim on the controller will, will also be neutral. Um, and really this is the way you should always do things. Um, even if you don't have AS3X or any type of stabilization system, I think it's best that you always um, tune the airplane in the air using your, your trim adjustment and then land it and then make your mechanical adjustments right back to those zero points and then fly from there. So in order to do that, we have a number of things that we're gonna be using today. Obviously the airplane is the first one. Uh, we're gonna have to fire up the controller to um, record our, our trim numbers, which we have a piece of paper here and in pen. We're gonna write down uh, the, the amount of trim we added and the direction of trim that was added. Um, so that way we can um, kind of make some adjustments and double check to, to make sure that we have those done. It's really more important when you do the aileron since you're only going to do one aileron at a time. Um, you want to loosen one, adjust it, uh, and then move the trim to where it was at um, to get the fly right, adjust your other one, and set it back to zero. So a piece of paper is always nice and handy to have uh, with you. You'll need a, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. i got a couple here to pick from just because um, not all of them fit the, uh, the little screws properly, and this is how you're gonna adjust the, um, the push rod length on the E-Flight Cherokee. You may have uh, threaded clevises that you need to undo and, and adjust that way, or you're gonna be using a um, adjustment on the, uh, the servo end by just turning the adjustment screw, sliding the, uh, the push rod, just depends on your particular model. So I got a couple screwdrivers here. And then one thing that I found is really helpful um, this probably dates back to my days of uh, designing uh, machines and, uh, and tooling and fixturing, is I made myself a, uh, a simple height gauge. Um, I, eventually I want to get a height gauge, and I'm sure I could find them off eBay that are out of calibration and no longer needed, but this works uh, fairly well, and it was using stuff I had around the house. A uh, chip clip and a little uh, T uh, triangle square here that's got a flat on the bottom that gives me something to uh, prop it up on, and then I just used a uh, set of digital um, calipers here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use these as a measuring point on the control surfaces. And then as I adjust them, I can make sure that I adjust them to the neutral point. So now we looked at the, uh, the tools that are gonna be needed. I'm gonna go ahead and bind the airplane uh, to my DX6 and I'm gonna write down the values that are in the trim. And then I'll be right back to uh, begin the adjustment process. All right, so we have the um, DX6 here. We got it brought up, we've got the Cherokee uh, profile loaded up and one of the things we're going to be doing before we really start work on the model and there's really got two things you can do here you can do one remove the prop which is uh, the safest way to go just in case you bump anything because you are working on this thing it's sitting on the bench you don't want to get yourself hurt there's no battery in this yet so don't worry um, but when you're working around the airplane you don't want to uh, inadvertently bump a prop and uh, get a prop strike uh, you could I've seen people they bump this with their elbow maybe when the cat's bump six I'm working inside the house today you don't want to have a problem. So the other option is, is if you don't want it to go through the hassle of taking the prop off, is to make sure that your throttle cut, which I have here, is my um, my C button here. And let's just double check to make sure. Well, you can't because the battery's not in it, but you just want to make sure the throttle cut. So let's just listen. Yeah, just a verification that the throttle cut is active and we don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, power up the battery now, or plug in the battery, power up the airplane.
All right, the power-up procedure is complete. Um, you see everything is, uh, lights are on, uh, trips are all done. We'll just verify and make sure everything works. Yep, uh, rubber works, yep. Let's go ahead and um, let's check the throttle here real quick. Yep, throttle cut is active. You don't have to worry about the prop moving since the prop is installed. The next step we wanna do is right now, the um, since all the control surfaces are at their, their uh, kind of the point that they would be at if the airplane was gonna be flying level, and we look at the trim that we have down, we're gonna go ahead and write that trim numbers down on a piece of paper here. Because we'll need these for reference. All right, so we have the numbers written down and we also have our assistant Piper here uh, who always loves to come help me whenever I'm working on airplanes, especially for whatever reason, um, the Cherokee models. She seems to be um, always helpful when these are uh, on the workbench. So. She's here to help us today. We're gonna to go ahead and uh, we got the numbers written down. We need a little bit of uh, elevator adjustment, which is not surprising given uh, how the sensitivity of the elevator um, or stabilator on the uh, Cherokee model since it's a full flying stabilator. No surprise, that takes a little bit of fine tuning. Even though I have it perfectly centered in the, the indentation that's in the fuselage, you still need to maybe a little bit of adjustment to get it fine tuned in. And then we need also need a little bit of aileron adjustment. What I find interesting about that is um, the aileron adjustment that you need to really level the airplane in flight actually moves the surfaces what they would appear to be slightly off from what um, the neutral point would be of if, if you put a straight edge on there. In fact, this aileron is slightly up and this aileron is just a hair down. In fact, actually that one's a little bit more up, which tells me that the ailerons probably were not exactly centered uh, when I flew the airplane. But with the numbers written down, we're able to, um, to make sure that we can translate the trim uh, from the receiver or the transmitter to the aircraft. And that's known, of course, as mechanically trimming. So let's go ahead and let's start on the, um, let's start on the aileron. All right, so what I've done is I just set the, uh, my, my makeshift uh, height gauge here, and the number really is not important here. So if you, you could even do this with uh, a number of things you could probably find around the house. Because all I really want to do is get something that marks the height that's consistent that will mark the height of the, the tip of the, uh, the aileron down to a known surface. We're just going to use the surface of this table here, and I just want to come up and mark that. So then as I take the trim, uh, off of the transmitter and loosen up the adjustment on the bottom of the wing here for the aileron that I can move the aileron and get it right back to the position that it should be in. Um, like I said, it's a little interesting that uh, this aileron needs to be moved um, in one direction, um, which would actually make it look optically um, off. However, when you're dealing with foam airplanes, they're not 100% true every single time. In fact, I've had three Cherokees in total um, and none of the three are identical. The CGs are in different spots. The amount of trim is different. The how they fly is a little different. So each one is a little bit unique. So this particular model needs a certain amount of trimming to make it fly level, um, which is interesting. The very first one I had uh, really didn't need any trimming at all. It came perfect out of the box. But this one has different servos in it. It has Emacs servos, Metal Gear servos in it versus the, uh, the Spectrum ones from the factory. And so I had to change all the, um, the locations of the rods and everything. So that's causing some issues, I think, with uh, just getting it trimmed as well as a factory uh, airplane would be. So now that we have it marked, um, the height of the aileron marked from a known surface, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the trim out of the, the aileron um, on the transmitter. And that's simply done by just moving the, uh, the trim uh, adjustment here. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and move that. And I can see, yep, the uh, aileron is moving down and that's all the trim it needed. Just a few, uh, just a few buttons there. And my guess is that, that that's probably close enough for AS3X would have been all right. But uh, I still prefer having a mechanically trimmed airplane. So we are now at the zero point um, on the aileron. 
and that is the aileron I need to move, and I'm gonna simply adjust it so that the tip of the aileron is in line with, or just touching my makeshift height gauge here. All right, so I have the push rod uh, loose right now, so you can see it moving there. It's a little, little tough to tell coming. We're talking about uh, a very, very small amount of movement on the aileron. But it's also important to make sure that you do not move the airplane or the sight gauge when you do this, otherwise uh, your set point is gonna be off. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, since I got it loose, I'm gonna move the aileron until it hits the, uh, the point on my height gauge there and then tighten it all back up again. All right, so that adjustment screw is now tight and that aileron is, um, has been adjusted and that is now matching the position of where the trim was on my transmitter uh, when I powered it up and that was set from the last flight. So now I'm gonna come over and uh, do the same thing to the other aileron. However, remember I set the trim to that to zero and move the aileron to my height gauge. So in order to set this side, I have to go back to my piece of paper here, dial in the same amount of electronic trim or transmitter trim here, and then trans transfer that to uh, this aileron by using my height gauge to set the zero point. All right, so I got the airplane turned around just to make it easier for, for everyone to, to see on the video. I just moved the, uh, the trim over to the same point that I had it uh, when I flew the airplane, and that's in order so I can dial in that aileron now that this one has been set. Um, what I find interesting is we talked about how the, the foam planes are really kind of inconsistent. We're sitting on a, on a flat table, the airplane is sitting on the wheels, and yet um, when I had the height gauge, which has not really been touched since I brought it over on this side, um, that, that height gauge was touching the tip of the aileron on this wing and is probably a good, I don't know, eighth inch, three sixteenth of an inch off the aileron on that side. That just shows you the inconsistency uh, from one wing uh, to another. Um, so you can, in fact, I with my other Cherokee, I actually put them back to back one day because I was hoping to use the uh, elevator adjustment from one to transfer to the other one to get me relatively close. And I would say that the um, elevators are about a quarter inch different in height uh, than between the two airplanes. Uh, the fuselages are actually that much of a difference um, in height, my guess is probably due to landing gear. Same batteries put in them, sitting on the same piece of flooring, and they're about a quarter inch different. So, like I said, these foam planes are not that precise, and you can see that by the height gauge being about an eighth inch or so off. So, we now have this set. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna get the height gauge uh, set up on the tip of the aileron, then loosen up the, um, the adjustment push rod and tweak that aileron. Okay, that screw has been loosened up, so now we're gonna go back here, we're gonna change our trim to zero. There we go. Trim set to zero, and now we're just going to adjust this aileron accordingly, which is actually easier one way than the other because if this thing is actually, if you got the push rod loose and you got this set up as the height gauge, it will actually stop it from, uh, from moving. All right, easy as that. This aileron is now adjusted. We have our trim set to zero on the ailerons. We go ahead and move the height gauge off there. And now the ailerons should be set. Um, it looks like we have a little bit more washout on this side than this side, just because that aileron is a, a touch higher um, than what it uh, would be if you put a straight edge on it. This one is actually pretty close to level, uh, surprisingly. Uh, but whatever the reason is, that's what it takes to get this particular airplane to fly. And that's just like, you know, a lot of times if you look at, um, VRC groups or you look at any Facebook groups or anything like that, people say, what CG should I use to fly the airplane? What, what, the, what this or what that should I use? Every one of these planes is a little different. Asking for other people's recommendations is great. It's a starting point. Just the same as I leveled all these surfaces uh, using a straight edge. 
um, before the first flight, I had to go back through and give a little bit of adjustment here and there to get the plane to fly exactly how it should or how I want it to fly. So while recommendations are great for a starting point, you need to dial in your particular airplane. You should always set the center of gravity to whatever the manual suggests and make your adjustments from there. In fact, I find that even with the same, same airplane, if I got two, two airplanes exactly the same, the CGs will be a little bit different between the two and how much adjustment I may wanna make for my personal flying style is gonna be unique to each, and, each airplane as well. Um, so it's, it's okay to use it as a starting point to ask what somebody else uses, but always start with what the manual recommends and then make your adjustments um, based on that. So now with the aileron set, we're gonna do the same thing um, to adjust the elevator, um, except I don't think we really need to go into that on the, uh, the video portion now that you've kind of seen uh, how to do it. We're gonna use the exact same thing all over again on the elevator, using our height gauge, using the trim that's in there to set the height gauge, put that to zero, and make our adjustments um, to get us there. So I think we've learned a pretty valuable uh, little lesson today on, on how to set a mechanical trim an airplane and make it easier. Uh, before I built this little height gauge thing here, I really struggled with transferring mechanical trim uh, on the airplane. I just really struggled trying to figure out a great way to do it. I've done this now on probably, I don't know, five or six different airplanes, and it makes it really, really um, repeatable and easy to do. So I hope this helped. Um, if you don't have a, a set of calipers at home like I do, um, I'm sure you can probably find something around the house to make it because all you're trying to do is just get something that sets a set point of where that control surface should be. So as you adjust it, you know you're always gonna get it to the right spot. So I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today on mechanically trimming an airplane. And this is apply, applicable to almost uh, any RC plane that uh, you have in your hangar. So thanks again for, uh, for joining me today on this and uh, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button if, uh, if you found this tip helpful. So thanks again.